Hello, welcome to my must-know editor tricks on advanced curving. We're going to be looking at my latest mecha creation, um, Wheatley from Portal 2, and we're going to talk about the tricks that I learned from making this mecha, and I'm going to explain them in various chapters throughout this video, so go to the description if you're looking for something specific. Anyway, let's go ahead and start. The order of your curving methods does actually matter. So here we have fan shaping first. And we're going to see what happens if I try to put fan shaping last. So let's go ahead and delete our fan shaping here. And let's go ahead and re-add it on the very end here. We had a YZ fan shape at 138. And as you can see, this looks way different. This is not what we had originally. And thanks to the way the editor works, um, I can't actually put it back. So when you remove your... Uh, curving methods to make room for new ones, make sure that you're removing the one on the very end because um, it's going to permanently change the way everything looks. So let's say I want to make a perfect circle. I could of course try to use bending, but really you want to use um, fan shaping because fan shaping will make a perfect circle that is completely symmetrical. So we have ZX uh, shaping here and that will make a circle in this direction or a circle in that direction and the other settings for fan shaping will make the circle go in different directions. And that's what allowed me to make parts like this. This uses fan shaping. This part also uses fan shaping. This part right here uses fan shaping. And this part right here uses fan shaping. So fan shaping is a very powerful tool, um, similar to X and Z bending. I'd say that it is probably the second most powerful tool. Okay, let's assume for a moment that this part is fully scaled that I cannot scale it any further. What do I do? It doesn't quite fit onto the build here and I can't scale it. So you would think that this part is a lost cause, but actually no. What you can do is you can go to your advanced curving settings, do Z bending or X bending. And in this case, we're gonna wanna do Z bending. By stretching these lines out, we can actually force the game to continue to scale our part. And this should be just the right size to fit over our build here. Perfect. Now, occasionally, you might run into a part that you're going to need to bend around some kind of reference. Here, we're going to be bending this part around Wheatley here. You might be wondering, well, how do I make it look so good so that it looks like it's a perfect sphere? Well, really, you can't get everything perfect. However, you can make one side perfect. The way you do this is use fan shaping. So we're gonna go to YZ fan shaping here and I've already got the angle I need for this. This is a very good spherical shape. It's perfect because uh, the fan shaping is inbuilt to do this kind of thing. And now we need to uh, stretch it across. So we're gonna use our Z bending scaling trick in order to do this. I think it's about roughly right here if I remember correctly. All right, good enough right now. Next thing we want to do is we're going to want to bend it to the shape of the rest of the sphere here. As you can see, this part is still perfectly straight, but it's going to need to bend. And this is where you simply are going to have to do things manually, unfortunately. Really the best way to do that is you have some kind of reference. So I will be using this uh, fan shaped sphere in order to X bend. So let's start doing that here. As you can see, I am just trying to follow along the the side of the, the sphere here. And well, let's see how that looks. That's not terrible. This is not scaled properly still. However, if we look over here, our part now roughly follows the outline of Wheatley. Now, you can fiddle around with this a little bit more in order to get it absolutely perfect. I will show you what that looks like when it has been perfected. After playing around with our... So after playing around with this part, X-bending it, scaling it, and all that, I've got it back to its original state. This is basically how it was in the beginning, like I'm almost convinced. That is how you bend a part around a spherical object while keeping it looking relatively quality looking. Okay, next let's go over how to make a sphere. So to make a sphere, you're going to need a flat piece that is rectangular. Depending on how detailed you want the sphere, you can change the size of the part by shrinking it down or making it larger. And the larger it is, the better the sphere will look. So 
for the sake of doing this in a timely manner, I will be doing a smaller sphere. So I'm going to be using Z bending to do this. I will put Z bending in advanced curving. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need the, to make the side profile of the sphere in our Z bending menu here. And the way we do that is we just simply have to manually adjust each point. And depending on the quality of how you do this will be um, how your sphere ends up looking. So you want to you want to put some effort into this. We're going to end up with this half cylinder kind of shape. And this is our side profile of the sphere. So next we're going to do fan shaping. We're just going to do, I believe CX is a correct one. Yeah, it is. So we're going to set that all the way to 360 and boom, we have a sphere. And as you can see, it's a little rough around the edges. Um, you can see the lines where the X bending happened. And well, you don't typically want that to happen, but it's the best you can get with um, that size. A real good example of sphere usage is on the Iron Giant mecha build by iSpider. As you can see, the helmet has this dome shape that is um, used by curving, and it also has these joints that are spherical in shape, and it makes for a very quality build. So let's say, hypothetically, I am working on a new part. This part is already moved to where it needs to be. It is touching to this other part right here. As I start adding more parts and I'm designing it, um, it starts moving out of place. Like if I want to make it a thicker, all of a sudden it's out here. And I can use the move tool to reposition it, but it's not gonna be in the exact same spot it was before. But if we wanna be very precise, we all we have to do is mirror the amount of blocks that we've placed on one side to the other. And now our part is in the original position it was in. As you can see, it's no longer uh, clipping underneath. Let's just, let me show you what it looked like before um, and what it looks like after. So now you have this pole sticking out of your part though, and you don't want that because it's ruining the aesthetic of your build. So all you have to do is delete um, part of the pole and basically stick the part that's maintaining the position of the part and hide that inside another part and it will retain its position while looking like a seemingly normal part. However, if you remove this part, it will go back to the way it was before. So make sure you don't delete that. So if I were to take an example of a part that is using this kind of precise um, transformation or moving, we would have um, the eye cover right here. So if I remove this part, all of a sudden it shrinks down and um, it looks awful. So I simply had to add a part here to fix that. On a similar note, if you were to start building out on a fan-shaped object that has been bent, so in this case, we have a fan-shaped object on the ZX axis with Z bending. Well, if we start building on this part, you will see that it starts to do some really strange things. So. I will build out two, and I will build out uh, two this way. And as you can see, all of a sudden, our part starts expanding in size. And well, that's because um, the center over here, it's, it's going to a point. And if we add more blocks going this way, it's going to push our blocks out in this conic shape. So it's going to basically scale our part up. and you're just going to have to manually uh, scale it back down. So let's talk a little bit about X bending and Z bending. Out of all the curving techniques, these ones are definitely the most um, complicated and the most powerful. So I'm going to be taking a look at this um, side part I have here for Wheatley. So as you can see from top to uh, middle here, we have the profile of our part. So this angle here is that, this straight edge is this part, the black would be here, and then on the inside, things change up a little bit. We have this uh, straight line here, and that's making this um, detail here actually go back inwards. And this is great for um, saving on parts on this build. Um, one problem I ran into when I was making this build is that um, I was running out of parts that could actually reach our build here. So 
as in like the move tool simply does not go far enough like for example if I were to use down here and I try to move this up well it, it just doesn't reach it's not not gonna allow me to move it that far for whatever reason so in order to save parts this needs to be done in one part and Z bending allows me to do that this is not actually a curving trick but it is important to know certain parts will actually have a varying distance it can be moved so the most flexible of these parts are the wing parts and the least flexible would probably be these waist parts so as we can see our wing part here has a very large area it can move in it can go all the way out here it can go all the way over here it can go all the way down there or all the way up here and that's great that's great for um, offsetting parts if your mecha is very part heavy and you're starting to run out of connection points just keep in mind that uh, whatever part you end up having to move will take the animation of let's say the wing so ensure that that part is not horribly important or it will ruin the look of your design so as you can see in this segment here um, the part attachment points that I've used for Wheatley doesn't allow the parts to animate very much so the creation doesn't break whenever you try to walk around so the next thing I want to talk about is how to make symmetric circles using fan shaping. So what we have here right now is we have a fan shaped part. It's um, not very thick, pretty long, but as you can see, I can still add on to it. No problem. So when we turn this back into a circle, as you can see, there's a problem. We have one point on the left, but two points on the right. It's not symmetrical. So the way we're going to fix that is we're just going to add a block and this will bring the amount of blocks up from 7 to 8 which should make an octagon shape. So once we scroll this thing back out to its original shape, as you can see we have an octagon shape. And to get it to be more circular you just need to add more blocks but make sure that if you're trying to make um, circles line up with each other that you are using the exact same amount of parts so that the points on the circle line up so as you can see on Wheatley here the outer circle matches up with the black circle behind it because they have the exact same amount of vertices and I had to reload that there in order to show that so you can see um, the side is vertical the black is vertical at that left side there so these tip videos are great for learning how to make specific part shapes, but they're not the best for figuring out how to make a mech from scratch. So in the next video, I'm going to go through my own um, way that I make mechas. So um, we're going to be making Eve from Wally, -E, and I'm going to go through the entire process step by step and show you how I make my mechas.